So let's begin today's lecture by solving this, this problem, if you will, a piece of code. So let's have a look at what exactly is going on here. So we have a function that takes an argument and returns the result of calling that argument. So the assumption then is that it's going to take as an argument a function, right? So it's expecting as an input a function which it will run, it will execute, and then return whatever it returns. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what that does. Then here we, we call that function and we give it as an argument this function here. Now question, when you run this function, this function goes in here and runs, what does this function return? It returns this here, right? Look, return function. It returns this function here, right? Okay, so that means if I just, um, when I call f, passing it this function, it goes here, it runs, and therefore returns this function right there. And so f1 basically has a reference to this function here. Are you guys following that? Okay. Then, so when I print f1, what I expect is for this function, function f3, return f3, to print onto the console. There it is. Right? Then what I do is I call f1 and give it a function. So I call this and I give it a function. It then runs that function and returns its result. What is the result of running this function? 34. So this function goes in here, runs, returns 34, it then returns that result, which is 34, and so VB takes 34. And so I print VB, which is 34. That was a fun one. Um, so it's okay if you weren't able to solve it because it was a little messy, and I did it on purpose, but the solution should make sense to you. If it doesn't, come to office hours, please. It's very important that you do. Um, so a few things about the homework. So lots of people were asking me questions about the homework, so let me give you a few hints to help you move along. So some hints on the homework. So first of all, if I asked you guys to print, to create a function that takes you know, some argument like depth or you know, lines and printed that many items, that many stars, <coughs> Let's do it together. Can someone help? Okay, so I need to give it a name, right? What would be a name for a function that you know draws stars? Stars. Stars. Or draw stars. Or print stars, whatever. Okay, so I have a function. It needs an argument. I need to know how many. N, sure. Okay, so then what I'll do, let me add a syntax error, just so I don't get infinite recursion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log a star. Uh, okay, so now if I were to just call this function, draw stars, it will run and draw a star, obviously. Right? Right, it's good. Okay, so let me give it an argument, like five. I still only have one star. So, okay, so it makes sense that we maybe should loop. So we keep drawing stars five times, right? Okay, so let me, how do I do that? So I need a termination case, right? So if n is what? Then I should do, yeah, then stop. If it is not less than or equal to zero, I'll draw a star, and then what? So what happens? I have five in here, it goes here. Is five less than or equal to zero? No. I print a star, I do it again. <laughs> but with n minus one, which would be four. Is four less than or equal to zero? No. Print a star, one less would be three. I come here. And I keep doing this, and I keep printing stars until n becomes zero, and I stop. Do you need to actually return? No, you actually don't need this. 
Is that part clear? Okay, so then in the homework though, what I want you to do is for each one of these, I want you to draw a whole bunch of stars and spaces. So I need some spaces to push it this way and then stars to do the rest of it. Then spaces, then stars. So the number of stars keeps getting smaller and number of spaces keeps getting larger, right? In order to have an upside down triangle. And what you will notice is that at each level, the number of stars decreases by two. Right? One from here, one from here. One from here, one from here. The number of spaces increases by one. one. Now, so presumably what you might want are additional variables to keep track of, say, the number of stars that you want to print and the number of spaces. So what we could do is instead of doing the recursion in this function, we could actually do this. Look, we can create a completely different function, const my you know, stars. That takes n, that takes num spaces and num stars. And then just call that my stars. Now n is going to be whatever I, I give it, that's going to be the depth. How many spaces will the first row have? Zero. How many stars will the first row have? Nine. Nine plus well, let's think. Let's think Nine about this for a second. Nine plus three. Nine plus three. This is the depth of three, right? The first row, relative to the depth, relative to the depth, how many stars do I have? Nine minus one. Yeah, 2 times the depth minus 1. This is the depth of 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 will give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 stars. Right? Okay, so then that would be n times 2 minus 1. Right? Okay, so here what I need is some recursion to print the spaces and stars, this many spaces and this many stars. And then when I do the recursion, what I need to do is change number of spaces by how much? By one. By one. And change number of stars by two. by two. So each time I do a recursion, I'm going to increase number of spaces by one, so plus one, and number of stars decrease minus <coughs> two. And n will decrease by one for each level, right, bump, 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 until n reaches zero and we stop. Yes? That's how you do that. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, that's stars. Checkerboard. A lot of people asking me how to do the checkerboard. So for the checkerboard, so for stars, what you're going to have to do is to create a function that takes a length and returns to you a string with that many stars inside. Let me say that one more time. You need a function that takes a number and returns a string with that many stars inside of it. You do the same thing for spaces. So if I say space is five, it gives me a text with five spaces in it. Then all you do is you call that with number of spaces. You call stars with number of stars. So you have the two strings, spaces and stars. You stick them together. How do you stick things together? Strings plus. And then you console log the result for every line. You guys see this? Make sense? Yeah, so, so. Okay. Um, so if you know how to create that function that given a number gives you the number of stars, a checkerboard is actually very similar. Except at each recursion, instead of concatenating a star every time, Sometimes you want to do a star, and sometimes you want to do a space. Every other one, right? You want one star, one space, one star, one space. OK, tell you what. Let me, let's, let me tell you how to write the recursive function that creates the string. Suppose I wanted to do this, const stars. No. Let's create a function that when you call it with a 5, will return a string with five, 5 stars in it. How would I do that? I 
want to create a function that takes a number. And so this should return a string with one, two, three, four, five things inside. You know what? Let me return for now. I know you know. And then, if it's not the termination case, what's the recursive case? Right? Okay, so let me, let's see what we get. Let's print result. You guys see this? Watch. Good. Include the string as an argument. Include the string as an argument. So How does it only have to be Ah, yes. I'll get yes, but I don't. That's good that you know. Right, so in this case, what we're doing is we're concatenating that many stars to get, but the problem is you're, you're adding, you're concatenating a star. Watch. Remember that stars five is exactly the same as doing five, uh, a star concatenated with stars four. You see how this and this are equivalent? Okay, so you know that that is the same thing as doing, stars four is the same thing as doing a star plus stars three, right? Which is exactly equivalent as doing stars three being stars two, which is exactly the same as having this be star plus stars one, which is exactly the same as having this be star plus what? When it's zero, it's going to come here and return nothing, which is undefined, which is why it's doing this. What we want is for it to do this. The other thing we could do, by the way, is just have it stop at one and return a star. Start. Or if it's a zero, return an empty string. And so the result is this string. If you wanted to do create a function that given a length gives you number of that number of spaces, you would do the same thing but replace the star with space. Right? A better thing, which is what you were suggesting, was instead of having two different arguments, specify what should be concatenated as an argument. That way you can use the same function to concatenate stars and the same function to concatenate spaces. You just give that as an argument. Yeah. Okay, so put everything together and you have your triangle. If you have trouble or you feel like you can't move forward, come to office hours. We'll help. Now, a few people had some questions about uh, functions, so I want to go over that a little bit more before we move forward. Um, one thing, guys, remember that in the homework, I might say of something <coughs> might only take one argument, like checkers. Only takes a single argument, right, like n. <coughs> that doesn't mean that you have to only use this function. You can make your own func which takes n and something else, and lots of other arguments that you want, and you can recurse over those. Ah. Okay, let me be clear. It's the number of stars. You're right. It's the, it's, in reality, it's double because of spaces, but just number of stars. Fair? Um, any questions before we move forward? Okay. Hands
hands up if you've done the homework. Okay. I was just curious. Good. Um, okay. Let's let's have a look at this. Okay, other than the people who talk all the time, someone else, what do you suppose will happen in F1? What goes into F1? So what is, if I were to print F1, what would it print? Right, look, we're giving f a function. That function is going here, and we're getting it back. So that means this function here is being returned, and therefore being thrown into f1. Got it? Oh. Uh -huh. OK. f is a box. It takes an argument. It returns the same thing, right? So that means if I were to call f with a 1, what would this return? One. A one. Look, it's returning whatever you're giving it. Look, it's taking something and returning the same thing. Yes? So F1 returns one. Right? F, okay, fine. What does that return? <laughs> same thing. 763 goes in here and it returns 763. Right? Well, if that's the case, then how is that different from this? What does this return? This function here, the same one. It goes here and it returns the same one. Right? Okay, so that's the same question. It's, this is the function that I give it. It returns F2, which is this function here. So F1 has a reference to this here. So if I do F1, what do I get? 1, because I just ran this function here. Are you guys getting this? Some are, some are not. OK, we have two options. You guys tell me. If you feel confident with recursion, we can move on to objects and arrays. If you don't, we can continue reviewing recursion. Those who want to continue reviewing recursion, raise your hands. Fair enough. <laughs> so, can I have a question about the previous thing? If we put print as object F2, it will return that If we do this? Okay, if we do this, look. This F goes in here. This runs it. Right? Executes it, which means it runs this function. What does this function return? One. Right. So when you run it, it's going to do this, and then therefore it's going to return one. Therefore, F1 will get one. Yeah. And this will cause an error because you can't execute a one. Right? Okay. All right, I got one for you. Const F takes a string. Tell me what this does. A, B, C, D, E. Wait, wait, wait. No, no thanks. Genius. Uh, const R, uh, console.log R. Then what we're going to do, termination case, if, oh, let's do it. Let's create another function, const F2, which takes the stir and an index. Let's call f2, return f2 with stir and index of 0. If index is uh, greater than or equal to stir.length, we will return. Else, we will return stir index 
plus F2 star index plus one. <laughs> what will this do? Okay, so I got it does nothing, it prints the same one, it what else? There were a few more? Someone said it reverses it. Anyone else? Okay, one thing you will notice right off the bat is in order to do what I wanted to do, I needed a second variable, right? So rather than forcing the user of my function to specify a second variable, I just made my own function that takes a second variable. Let me say that one more time. In order to do what I wanted to do, I needed another variable for my recursion, my index. Instead of putting it here, because then anyone who uses my function now has to also worry about passing an index, right? But I don't want that. I want my function to be easily usable. So all I ask you to do is give me a string and I'll do the job. Don't worry about indexes. And I'll take care of that. So I create my own function that has a string and takes an index. And then I simply return whatever it returns. So what do I return? Well, stir is A, B, C, D, E, right? <coughs> Zero goes in index, and stir go is A, B, C, D, E. With me so far? Is index greater than or equal to stir dot length? What is stir dot length? One, two, three, four, five. Is zero greater than, five, or, greater than or equal to five? No. No, okay. So what I do is I take the index zero of stir. What do I do? What do I get if I do stir zero? A. 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 Right, so I get this right here, and I can catenate that with the recursive sub call, which gives the same, same string but increases index by one. So next time I come here, index is one. Is one greater than or equal to stir dot length? No. no, so I come here. So I return stir index of one, which would be B. B. And then I do a recursive again, and again, and again. And so what I do is I get, end up doing A concatenate with B concatenate with C concatenate with D concatenate with E. So what do I get? The same thing. A, B, C, D, E, right? Don't answer this, but think about it. If I were to, instead of ha starting with zero and going up to stir dot length, what if I were to start from stir dot length maybe minus one and go down. Reverse. Same thing in reverse order. The string length is five, but the index goes up to four. Yes. Yeah, because it begins with zero. So the last character in the in the last index is length minus one. Got it? Some of you are like, oh my god, that's the homework. We just solved it. Yeah, some of you are. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, questions about this code here? No questions? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, any other questions regarding this code? The string. It takes the character in that index and returns it as a string. So you get the string A. Got it? Other questions? Okay, a few things about a string just in case the directions were not clear in the homework. That will give you J. 
That will give you O. That will give you O defined. Why? Okay, because there is nothing in that index, right? This is the 0 index. This is the 1 index. This is the 2 index. 3 index is nothing. If I know that stir dot length will give me the length, how do I know what the last index is? Length means 1. <laughs> that will give me the last character. Look. Make sense? You just take the length of the string and you subtract one to get the last index. Because the length is the number of characters, whereas index begins with zero and goes up to length minus one. Okay. And how do we stick strings together again? So if we have, you know, spaces. We have con stars. We can console.log spaces plus stars. Oh, sorry. Okay, it will. It's this is I'm rendering in HTML which ignores too many spaces. Don't worry about that. In, in regular console it works the way you think. Okay, here, I'll I'll just do underscore. Okay, there. <laughs> okay, so we know how to concatenate. We know how to do stars. We know how to recurse. We know how to stick spaces and stars together. <coughs> what are you missing? What is it that you feel like you don't know to do the homework? What's terrifying. Space? Okay, look, if you guys need on uh, Thursday, let's do this. Listen, listen, listen. First, you have office hours, which you can come to. You know that. Um, there's also uh, Thursday, right? Come to class on Thursday with some high-level questions, and we can go over it. Fair? Yeah. I'll spend like 15, 20 minutes on Thursday just as answering questions. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, moving on. New topic. So, in programming, in JavaScript, we have a notion of an object. Yeah, there's no music. What is an object? Okay, so if you remember, we had variables like a, and we could put a value like a one. Fine. We could also put functions in there. OK. We could put strings in there. We could put booleans in there. Right? All of this is fine. I think this makes sense to everyone here. Yes? OK. The other thing we can do is do const a and then do that. What this will do is we'll make an object. What is an object? OK. Suppose I wanted to store not one value, but lots of values together. An example of this might be, suppose I wanted to have a single variable that contained inside of it information about my first name, last name, phone number, email address, etc., etc. Traditionally, I would need to do that. I would need a separate variable, right? Like f name would be, you know, Ruben. Cost l name would be last name. L name would be Meshchen. Then cost, you know, phone would be whatever, you know, some <laughs> number. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be calling me about the night. Okay. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right. Now, suppose I wanted to squish them all into like one thing. Ah, uh, okay. One container. So what I can do, it turns out, is put them into a container where I give it a name, like f name, colon, and then the value I want that name to have. So, Ruben, comma, l name, phone, 
Oh, yes. This is also called dictionary. <laughs> you can refer to it as a dictionary, yeah. It, yeah. Or a map. You can also refer to it as a map, yeah. And there's age, because I'm super young. Okay, good. Okay. Aww. Don't you start. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So now A, listen, listen. A is a container that has inside of it what are known as key value pairs. Pay attention to this. Key value pairs. The key is the name. The value is the value that is stored for that key. Okay, so now I want to read out a value. What do you suppose I need in order to read out a value? The key, the name of the thing that has the value. Right? So the way I do that is I do a dot and then the name of the key for which I want the value. So if I want my phone number, I simply do that. So let me console log that. There you go. If I wanted my first name, there it is. Make sense? OK. The other, so one thing I can do is when I create the object, is I can immediately say like the name of the key, colon, value, comma. Next name of the key, colon, value, comma. And in this way, create this key value pairing. Key value, comma, key value, comma, key value, comma. Got it? OK, so what that means is I can create a function that instead of just returning a value like 1, I can have it return an object that has, for example, an x, or x coordinate and a y coordinate. And now when I call it, I get back coordinates, from which I can do coord coordinates x to get the x and y to get the y. With me? Yes, questions? If you want to return both of them, can you? No, 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 no. You return an object that contains inside of it everything you want. And then once you have that value, that the object that is returned to you, you can then access any of the keys inside of it. No, you can do dot y and then you can do it again for x. Yeah, so for example, let's say I wanted to add the x and y that is returned by this function. Console.log, that plus that. Your coordinates is too long. Let me just call it c. There. So f returns one of these containers. That has inside of it name, value, name, value, right? Key value, key value. Then once I have that object that contains these key value pairs, I can refer to any of the values by the key. So c.y will return 83, c.x will return 44. And if I do c.y plus c, c.x, of course I get 127. And we don't need two commas? Why do I need a comma? Near, near keys in the function. Oh, this one. It's the last one. There's nothing after it. Look, think of a list, right? You're saying I have one, two, three, and four. You don't do that, right? Same idea. It's a list of key value pairs. Key, value. Next one. Key, value. Done. There is no next one. If we, well, we, if we have two values or more. So let's say four. Oh, two values for x? Okay, good. Watch this. What is a construct we can use to store more than one thing? An object. Right? Holy crap. Each function. 49. 
You're right that x can also be a function that returns, yeah, yeah. So what's cool about this is, look, a key can have any value which includes another object. Could it be? It can be a function, it can be a number, it can be a boolean, it can be a string. Oh. You can have an object inside of an object inside of an object inside of an object. No problem. So B could also be itself an object, for example, that has inside of it a 1 and a B, you know, whatever. Hash value? Oh, you mean here? Okay, now okay, now let's look at this equation. What is this saying? What this is saying is C dot Y, which would be 83, plus C dot X, which is an object. Can you add a number to an object? No. No, you can't add objects. That's an end. But what you can do is you can do dot A. Exactly. This part will return this object here. That object dot A will give you this. Now suppose I wanted to get to this one here. Yeah, let's make it not one, but you know, 17. How do I get to this guy? X dot B dot A. Dot B dot A. So again, C is an object. Inside of that, I get X. So this refers to this object here. Dot B will refer to this object here. Dot A will re refer to this here. Undefined. Oh, but, 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 if you try to do this, what do you think will happen now? So C is the object. Dot X will give you this. Dot B, so this will return undefined, right? What happens if you do undefined dot A? Error. Just go. So th this is why nothing printed. It's an error. If I do this, it's an N. Why? Because you're adding C to a Y to undefined. Yes. Does Yeah, yeah, yes. It doesn't matter. It, that's variables, not all. It, variables work the way they work. It doesn't matter what you put in them. Yeah. Yes. If we don't put the comma, it will be zero. Yeah, so okay, if you just if you do that, yes, it's an error. You, it does, you have to separate the two things. Yes. It's a list. It's saying this and this, next, this and this, next, this and this. Yes. Is x defined? Is x defined? Is x defined? What do you mean? That's a variable. No, it's not a variable. It's a key inside of an object. It's not a variable. In other words, you can't just say x. No. You have to say that object dot x to get access to it. Go. Yeah. Beautiful. Look at this. What do you think console is? It's an object that has a key called log. And the value of log is a function. Let's create our own. Look. Let's create a const console. It has a log, which is a function. This is how it works. Look. There is an object called console. Inside has a key called log that references a method or a function that takes a string and then draws that text on the console. Make sense? Now you know what console.log is. Yeah. So here we created the object with the same name as it is in the library. So yeah. this does not work because we Right. If I were to change the behavior to alert, 
Look. Instead of writing to the console, I changed it so it, when you do console.log, it doesn't alert. So this means that in JavaScript, the priority is not taken to the library, but what is written? Yes. Okay. You can override any of the methods. So, yeah. OK. A few more things. Can I ask? Yes, of course. No, you can't have two th two keys with the same. It's a oh, in the different objects. Yeah, but not in the same object. Okay, look. So the question was this: Suppose you have an object uh, well, that has some key like a, or let's call it name, that or address. Here's here's a good one. An address typically contains a street. You know. Whatever. Um, a, a city, a country, right? Now, up here, I could also do um, this is allowed. Why? Because this country is a key inside of this object, and this country is a key inside of this object. No, you just, I mean, so in other words, if you do obj.country, that will give you this one. If you do, Again. here, let's do Armenia 1 and Armenia 2. <laughs> there. It, this will give you this one, Armenia 1, dot address dot co dot country will give you, first you go to address, then you get the country, so you get Armenia 2 for this one. Object, you, you have to have a key, but the key can reference another object. Like this one, look, this is a key that references another object. Go. No, this one. What's up? <laughs> can, I, can we change that? Yes, I'll get to that in one moment. Yeah, you can. Even though, I know, I know, the cons is throwing you off. You can. I'll, I'll sh tell you in one moment. Yeah. What if we have the same key, the same object? Science? Okay, it depends if you're running in strict mode. In strict mode, this is an error. In non-strict mode, it will take the, the, the last one. It will ignore all the ones above it. So, but this, as far as I'm concerned, is an error. Don't do this. As Chikari says. Okay? Miyak. Because think about it. If it was allowed, what would this mean? What does this mean? Does it mean this or this? Exactly. So don't do that. Right? Have keys be unique per object. Okay. Let's do some more examples. Um, a uh, person, oh, university. Okay, let's describe AUA. AUA has a name, right? It has an address, which is some object with a bunch of things on it. Um, what else do we know about it? Okay. What kind of majors do we have? CS. Yes. CS, what do we know about it? It has a schedule. It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> okay, that's the chair. Cut it for me. No, no, forget. Oh, okay, I know. You guys all know Facebook. Okay. Profile. Profile. Okay, in profile, we want name. Joe. John, John, John Doe. Joe Young. <laughs> um, uh, what else do we, oh, profile picture. Uh, let's, so we take a photo from somewhere. Here, let's do, oh, some, some guy. Oh, ah, here we go. Oops, sorry, sorry, I meant that one. Okay, that's going to be his profile picture. Um, okay, profile pic, uh, what else? 
age? 19. Uh, oh, oh, email. Joe123 at gmail.com. Yeah, okay. Okay, so if I then later wanted to refer to Joe to the, the name of the profile, how would I get it? Right. If I wanted to get the age? Now he has friends. Let's say his best, no, let's call it a best friend. We don't have a race yet. Best? He has a best friend who has a name. Boss. Boss. Okay. How do I know the name of the person that this profile is best friends with? Right. So this will return this object, dot name will return its name. You guys getting this now? It's making sense? Okay. Now, a few operations that you can do. Oh, actually, there's one more thing. One more really important thing. In addition to doing profile dot name, listen, listen, listen. You can also do profile open brackets, which you've seen before in strings, and as a string, pass name. Yeah, as a string. It's the same thing. So you're wondering, wait, why would you ever do that? Suppose his key wasn't just like F name, it was first name. What would happen if you did this? Profile dot first. Can you do that? No. No, the key can't have a space, right? But if it does have a space, it's OK to do this. Got it? So to be clear, this and this are equivalent. It's just two ways of doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Good question. So remember that these two are equivalent, right? So instead of dot whatever, you do bracket whatever. OK, so let's follow that. Let's get best friend using bracket notation. Which is the same thing as doing this. Wait. Right? Which is the same thing as doing this. Which is the same thing as doing this. No, no. You guys see how all these are the same? Yes. Good question. What do you think? What is the value of best friend? Wait, wait, what do you, look, best friend is this. What is the value? No, John, all of this. All of this, this whole thing. What is that? It's an object. So you get the object. So what you can do is you can say profile.bestfriend. Store that into another variable, and then later, if you do friend.name, what do you think you'll get from here? Chen. What does best friend, what is stored inside of this key? What? Best friend, colon, this thing. A teacher. Object. So, you would profile that best friend returns an object. Oh. Right? Okay, so that object dot name is this this object dot name, which is bonus bonus. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, now, are you guys with me so far? Okay, so what we understand is an object is just a container for key value pairs. Key value, key value. You can read out the values just by giving it a key, either by using dot notation or bracket notation. Fine so far? Who said no? I heard someone said no. Who are you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, if that's understood, there's another thing you can do. This is an empty object that has no keys in it, right? No values, no keys. Watch this. What do you think I just did? Created key. I added a key to the object and a value. So now if I do person.name, what do you think I get? Joe. 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 Good. Uh, now su suppose I did this. Person. Exactly. And if I do this, object. an object, this object here, right? Mike's object. Okay. I'm confused. What? It's an object, yes. But we are what? Yes, this is what I'm saying. You can you can modify things. So watch this. What do you think happens here? We changed who the friend is. Look, the friend used to reference this object with, with this name, right? We overrode, we replaced this object with an empty object, and then we set the name attribute of that new empty object to Mike. So that means here, what would it print here, and what would it print here? That's Joe, that's Mike with me. So in this way you can edit and also add additional keys to your object, key value pairs. Whenever you can add something, it makes sense that you have the opposite. You want to also be able to remove things, right? Whenever you're adding things, it makes sense you want to be able to sometimes remove them. The way you remove things is by using a delete call. Here's what you do. If so right now, if I do person.friend.name, it will return Joe, right? Mm -hmm. If I do delete that, it will remove this key from that object. It will remove this key. Exactly. Now, what I end up with is that. It's still an object, but the name attribute was deleted. If I were to instead do this, it will do this. Object. That uh, doesn't make sense. Because it's not a key. It's a variable. You can't delete a variable. Right? This is a key, but this is a variable. Do you guys see the difference? Now what I could do, watch this. Here's a good one. What do you think will happen now? Per, um, const f is person.friend, delete person.friend. What do you think is now inside, if I were to do console.log f.name? Undefined? Makes interesting. Some people say error, some people say Joe. Okay, delete, listen, delete does not destroy the object. It simply removes the key. 
So what we've done here is, yes, it's true that this key no longer exists. But this object is still being referenced by f. Look, person.friend returns this object, right? Yes? So that's the object we put into f. So now f is pointing at the same object. By doing this, what you're doing is deleting this key, the reference to this object by friend from this object. But f is still looking at this object. OK, look. You have a person object, which has a friend. This references another object, which has a name. Was it Joe? Yeah, Joe. This is person. This is an object that has a key friend that references another object that has a key name, which has Joe. Is that part clear? OK, then what we do is we say f is going to reference whatever the friend is referencing. That's this here. So then this is now pointing at this object. We then delete the key. That means we delete this. But this is still referencing the object. So f dot name means f, that's this object, dot name is this key, which gives you Joe. Then when you when you okay, good. Good, 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 good. So what he's saying is suppose you did this. What would be this value here? So you're doing f, is, and you're assigning undefined into f. So f has undefined. Right? Makes sense. Um, so Go. if you cancel out f, uh, it will return Joe. F? No, f is an object, which has inside of it a key name, which has Joe. Look, 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 look. It makes sense, right? F is referencing this object where the name is Joe. Okay, so we know how to make an object. We know how to put things into the object. We know how to change the object. We know how to add keys and remove keys. Yes? Did you, you got this, right? I guess. Yes? Can I ask a question? If, for example, we have 100 person and we should create 100 objects for every person and every object will have the same key but different values, is there a way for minimizing the object and not creating every time the same key? For bad no. function. Let's talk about after class. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, let's look at some more examples. Uh, give me an example of an object, but let's have it be deep. Anyone? No? Okay, so student. Okay, a student can be a part of an organization. OK, so a student can be part of an organization, which has a name, presumably. You know, don't you guys have like a youth something something? Yeah, United something. Let's just keep it simple. United Youth Federation, whatever. Yeah, OK. Doesn't matter. OK, what else? 
the United Youth, Youth Federation maybe has a number of members. Let's say they're super popular. Okay. Uh, it might have an address. And an address has, you know, city, uh, country. Huh? Oh, a logo. You're right. But whatever. Okay. Let's keep it simple. Um, street. Okay, good. Okay, very good. And the student has a name. What's another one? Mike Bogosa. Bogos Mike, yeah. I like that. That's gangster. Okay. First question. I want to know the street of the organization in which this of this the student is a part of. Nice. All right, let's console log that puppy. Boom. All right, not bad. Now, I realize, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. It turns out that the, the street is not Jogyan, it's Jiyan. How can I change that? Okay, so student dot or dot. Now I heard someone say, "Wait, we could." You're right that we could first do this. Delete the old one, remove the key, and then add the new key. But it turns out when you just do this, it does it overrides the original. It deletes the old and adds the new. And the last one. No, there's no last one. It's oh. There is another street, and we add another. Street. You're not allowed to add more than one street. You always have one 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 key per object. Ah, yeah, it, okay. When, when, by doing this, you're changing this key to not point at Zhou Yan anymore, but instead to point at Ji Yan. In a previous example, we wrote this uh, two times. And we said in one time, there will be like one. Yeah, forget. I was pointing out you, you cannot do that, because then you can't ambi disambiguate between them. Yeah. So forget that. Don't, never do that. Uh, wait, wait. Oh my god. Wait, sorry guys, one second. Go. Suppose address was false. Address was false. Just false. Like the bullying. False. No, 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 not, not the bullying. Suppose we were to change by using the list. So it is it's certain last one. Start straight. Then we want to change the address. That's straight. Address not straight. No, no, address doesn't change. Address is the object, is the name of the key that references this object. We then modify the street key of this object, that's this guy, to not be this, but instead be that. Got it? Okay, yeah, good. You, oh yeah, you can do this. I think what you're saying is, wait, if we have a different address? Yeah, you can do this. Look, look, look. Let's say it turns out that the organization has a second address. What you can do is say student.org.address2. Remember, if I just did address and I did this, it would override the other address, right? It would replace it. But what I do is give it a different key, address 2, and then now I can do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah then here I can say address. And then I can give it key value pairs. Whatever. 
automatic chisel. In other words, look, I think what he's saying is this. Street of Chica, oh look, for the last one, look, look, look. Carlos, thank you. You can say this. Let's check to see if this, the organization does not have a street, let's give it a street. Look, we say if student.org.address.street is falsy. Remember, if it doesn't exist, it's undefined, right? Undefined is falsy. If you flip falsy, what do you get? True. True. So if that's the case, we will assign a street to it. The name of the street is Yay. Other decision? No. Cool. Okay, we'll continue review of this as well as recursion next time, so don't worry, things are going to be okay.